This short's about private placements 3.0. What do we mean by that? Well, let's talk about private placements 1.0 first. It all started with the Securities Act of 1933, which federalized the securities industry. Before that, it was regulated at the state level. So when the Securities Act of 1933 first came out, it largely created a regulated, federalized public market that we now know as the public exchanges and the securities industry as it exists today. Part of that act, the, the Congress said, well, under certain conditions, we're going to allow some companies to raise money without having to go public. And the first, what was now called, and what was then called exemptions, came in the form of a Reg A exemption that you see here. Uh, back then, you can raise up to $100,000 initially, then they increased that to $300,000. And under Reg A, you could raise money without going public. What happened was, because of the lack of technology at the time and limited exemptions or circumstances by which you could raise money and not go public, the activity was limited to a select few wealthy individuals. Private Placements 2.0 really started in the 80s when a couple of things happened. First of all, computers became the norm. So what we did was we automated the securities industry by and large, just like automation has changed everything else in the world. It also dramatically impacted, for the better, the securities industry. And what we usually do with technology is we automate the old way of doing things. And that's largely what happened in Private Placement 2.0. We automated the uh, process of raising capital. The second thing that happened was Congress endorsed and created a new exemption called Reg D. And Reg D, the first Reg Ds came out in 1982. As you can see here, there's several different types. They also enhanced Reg A, and one of the greatest enhancements was you can now raise up to $5 million under Reg A. So computerization, computer networks kind of took the place of people shouting at each other on the stock market floor in New York and in other exchanges, but it also automated the way, the process of raising capital. We call that Private Placements 2.0. Well, Private Placements 3.0 is where we're at today. So a couple of remarkable things here. First of all, the Jobs Act of 2012, an element of that, actually enhanced the Securities Act of 1933 and further expanded uh, some of the rules in a couple of specific ways. First of all, it created a new exemption called Reg CF. And under Reg CF today, you can raise up to $5 million. But the biggest thing it did was it allowed anyone to participate when the Securities Act of 1933 came online, it largely took most of us out of that game of investing in private businesses where it was quite normal prior to the Securities Act of 1933. Folks, that's 90 years ago, that's two generations, so we're just not used to it. But today, under this new exemption called Reg CF, any one of us now can once again invest in a private business. For the record, the other exemptions did allow to some limited capability, some non-accredited investors to invest in private placements, but about 9% of us did, according to some uh, reports. But today, Reg CF allows us all to participate. The second thing the JOBS Act did was it recognized that we have this new elevated level of technology called the internet. It didn't exist in the 80s, 80s and most of the 90s, didn't exist in 1933. So Congress recognized that we can, through the SEC's regulations, can use the internet to facilitate investments in private companies. So that's the big news flash for private placements 3.0. Hopefully you got something out of this. The world has changed in the last 90 years. Now all of us can invest in private businesses. And uh, we hope that you've learned something from this. See you on the next one.